Hey there, y'all, and welcome back to Revolutionary Health. Revolutionary Health is a program of the Counter Narrative Project, and the mission of the Counter Narrative Project is to build power among black gay men and to work in coalition and solidarity with all movements committed to racial and social justice. You can find us online on Facebook, we're at the Counter Narrative Project, on Instagram, we're at the Counter Narrative, and on Twitter, we're at Building Desire. You are probably joining us from YouTube, right? So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And while you're watching this video, hit the thumbs up button to let us know that you're watching it. And don't forget to share it with your family and your friends to let them know that you were checking us out. Visit our website at thecounternarrative.org. And while you are there, sign up for the mailing list so you can hear everything that is going on with the Counter Narrative Project. My name is Johnny Ray Cornegay III, and I am honored to be the mobilization director for the Counter Narrative Project. My co host, Dr. David Malbranch, is off tonight, and I am just honored to have an amazing guest with me tonight, and I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves and tell them about you. Sure. Hey, my name is Craig Washington, and um, I've um, originally from New York and been living in Atlanta for many years now. Uh, I'm a writer, a community organizer, activist, and social worker. All that. <laughs> uh, working toward a little bit more integration in my life. Um, have experienced many transitions this past year, and it's brought me to a very, um, a very present, very self-aware moment in my life into okay so we're going to go into the topic in a minute but you said something that sparked something okay. so you talked about having like integration and alignment mm -hmm. for you what is that what is that feeling like to you in this moment mm. it feels like a um a kind of a well an a, a, a restoration of sorts, right? Like, I, I feel as if looking past, looking over the past year, and I think I'll speak to some of this because there's some personal um, struggles that I've had, uh, developments that I've had, and relationships that I have ended. Um, and it's through those relationships and my decision to end them that taught me a lot about myself, mm. right, around boundaries. And so it is, it's all... <laughs> You know, that's that's what I'm recovering from, a lot of compartmentalization. But it's the same Craig, yeah. you know, in these different aspects or right. components of my life. Uh, and so for me, the lesson has been in terms of, again, being more focused mm -hmm. um, and certainly being more mindful and vigilant when necessary around um, protecting my boundaries. Ooh. And... I feel like, so we're about to get into this conversation. So the topic, we couldn't think of anyone else that we wanted to have this conversation with than you. Um, so there's been a lot, mm, I've been to a lot of conferences, been in a lot of spaces where there's like the intergenerational dialogue conversation that kind of comes up. Okay. And one of the conversations that I, I know that for me personally, and I, I mentioned this to you before we got started, is mm -hmm. when I thought about, so the topic that we are going to spend some time on tonight is aging and living with HIV. That's like a core topic, but I think there's a lot of stuff in here. Yeah. <laughs> and okay, so I, I began to, as I was thinking about the conversation that we were going to have, thinking about me mm -hmm. and like how I, as a young person thinking about aging as a black man, thinking, I'm not sure what that's gonna look like. Like, I didn't mm -hmm. think it was gonna look like my dad. Mm -hmm. And my dad is dope, by the way. Like, he might even be watching the show because that's what he do. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't think, I was like, I'm different. So I don't know what, what my thing is gonna be. Mm -hmm. So now, mm -hmm. at 42, I'm figuring that out. So I'm grateful that I get a chance to know you and see you and like, oh, I can see, like, I know, I can see people, right? So I want to start with what did you think aging would look like for you as a youngster? Hmm. I, 
It's hard to, to, to really pull up. I know that it was it was always a, a fuzzy concept for me. And like you, uh, as long as I can remember, um, so, you know, as a, as a young child, um, in terms of having some consciousness, awareness of myself and the kind of kid that I was, the kind of little boy that I was, mm-hmm. I sensed a certain difference. Mm. Didn't have the, wasn't... Uh, just mature enough to understand that or frame that. But I knew that. And I knew that I didn't see myself falling along my father's path. And what I mean by that was necessarily having a wife and kids and that sort of thing. Now, there was so, there were basics. So my father was dope, too. Mm-hmm. Um, um, my father passed away. It's coming up on 10 years now. It's nearly 10 years ago that he passed away. And... His, some of his core values, yeah, I saw that. You know, I saw myself an ex, as an extension. I had his, I definitely had his, his, uh, his assertiveness, mm-hmm. his temper, mm. um, and there was an integrity about, he was, there was a way in which he was just truly his own character. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I admired that. But how my life would play out, I knew it wasn't gonna be like that. Mm-hmm. And I didn't necessarily have a model that I could latch onto. It wasn't until, and particularly in terms of seeing um, older gay yeah. men, it wasn't until I connected with, or was introduced to the life, so, to, it, so the, the community, um, mm-hmm. and frequenting clubs and other social spaces, black queer spaces where I'm seeing just the, the whole span mm-hmm. of um, life and generation and such that I began to, you know, just observe older black gay men. Mm-hmm. But even then, I don't, by that point, I was probably so <laughs> absorbed in my own life, mm-hmm. I, so I wasn't necessarily projecting, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I think along the way, I th- you know, when I was in my early 20s, I thought 40 was old. Right, is that, and that's that not old as in, you know, decrepit right. or, or somehow unattractive. I was actually attracted to, to older men. But old as in so distant from me, right? Wiser than me, mm-hmm. having much more life, and so I didn't, I, I didn't know if I, if I at that point could see myself in them. Mm. So, um, one of the things I often think about is terms of like um, now being at this space and being mm-hmm. reflective. Um, being at this age, I'm like, oh, this isn't that old. <laughs> you know? The closer you get. The closer you get, you're like, oh, what? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, you know, I, like I said, when I was in my 20s, I thought 40 was, you know, kind of up there. Right. Around about 35, I'm like, oh, 40. 50 is when you start getting old. Well, here I am at 59. I'm on the, at the brink of 60. He 59. At the brink of 60. Wow. Yes. Yes. Um... And 60, my 60 um, feels nothing like what I imagined years and years ago, decades ago, what 59 or 60 would be. It wasn't until, I would say, perhaps my Mm mid-30s where I'm I'm actually taking notice. And I'm looking at how um, gay men that are decades older than me, you know, how they are faring. Yes. uh, From those that have you know, social networks and friends and have robust social lives and seem to have a, 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 a sense of joy, not this stereotypical sort of dry, detached yes. or isolated existence. Mm-hmm. You know, they're Which not is real off too. on some yeah. shelf. Right. Right, so to speak. I'm talking about, well, I'm talking about the stereotype. Yes. I mean, there is a reality. There mm-hmm. are older brothers that are quite mm-hmm. st- literally structurally isolated yeah. and don't have connection. I would see men that that did. Mm -hmm. And so there was a way in which by my, I guess, entering middle age, that I did begin to pay attention. And I saw that, yeah, there was a possibility that I could uh, uh, have a a full and, and, and joyful life.